Hey everyone, now welcome back to Grey Matter. So we finished our first riddle, and uh, where else do we have to go? We I think the only thing we can do now at first, we still have stuff to do here, but I don't know. I don't think we need them now. Maybe go to Redcliffe first because we have um, the paper we need to give to someone here. I won't go here yet. I think we do this first might be a better choice. This is a really nice statue. I want that one. Thank you very much. She's both warm and disturbing. Like a crazy mother or something. So administrator. I guess we go in first. Yeah, Susan's office. Let's go straight in, I guess. Can I help you? Maybe. Hi, I'm Samantha Everett. I'm working with Dr. Stiles. Are you? You're not in the department. No, I'm studying English Lit. Well, that's Dr. Stiles' business. When you see him, remind him that I need that equipment receipt today. Have it with me. There you go. I have something for you. Oh my god, I gave up hope of ever laying eyes on this. The auditor's been hounding me for weeks. Thank you, Miss You're Edmonton. welcome. My pleasure. What else? Dr. Stiles. I've only started to work for Dr. Stiles. I was hoping to find out more about him. Well, it's not my place to talk about Dr. Stiles. I can tell you that Mr. Headley, he's the dean of the department, he was quite an admirer of Dr. Stiles. Okay. Naturally. We were all deeply saddened by what happened. Would it be possible for me to see Mr. Headley? I'm afraid not. He's very busy today. Wait, I, I do appreciate your bringing that receipt. Let me see if he's got a moment. Mr. Headley, I have a Miss Everett that would like a brief word. It's about David Stiles. Send her in. In you go. Thank you. Hello. Miss Everett, a pleasure to meet you. Won't you sit down? Thanks, and thanks for seeing me. I'm always happy to make time for David. I've heard from him too little of late. How is he? Um, fine. Very self-directed. Well, that's something. Are you a relative? Me? No. I'm his assistant. He just hired me. It did he? Interesting. Uh, how can I be of service, Miss Everett? <laughs> what? Are you aware that that Dr. Stiles is conducting an experiment right now? Of course. He had to submit a plan to the university, standard procedure. Uh, frankly, I was happy to see him working again. Oh, that reminds me. Dr. Stiles wanted me to pick up a copy of the experiment plan he submitted. He misplaced his copy. I think, young lady, that Dr. <laughs> Stiles will have to call me and ask for that himself. I'll tell him. What's wrong, game? Could you give me some background on Dr. Stiles? I don't know much about him. David Stiles was one of the brightest lights at Oxford. A truly brilliant and original thinker. He was the sort of man it was easy to envy. Wealth, a prestigious family name, good looks, a beautiful wife, effortless public success. Then there was the accident. A horrific, horrific thing. There's a poem by Robert Frost. Nature's first green is gold, 
her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaps of flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. Mm, that's beautiful. I wonder... Never mind. We must be honest with each other, you and I, for David's sake. What do you wonder? It's silly. I just wondered which is worse. To have been golden, to have had all that and lost it, or never to have had it at all. Not at all. Perhaps David asks himself the same question. I guess to never have had it at all. I mean, there's nothing you can miss then. I guess. I don't know. I've heard rumors about Dr. Stiles. Students say people have disappeared during his experiments and... Uh, stop. Don't repeat that nonsense in here, please. Sorry. Uh, no, it's only natural you would be concerned. He is your employer. There has been a lot of vicious gossip about David, but believe me, there's no truth in it. Then how did it get started? When someone is a little too successful, it inspires a lot of green-eyed spite. Should that paragon fall, let's just say there are certain people who love nothing more than to get out their knives and gather round the carcass. Of course, David hasn't helped himself any. If he insists on living like a hermit in that house, people are bound to believe the worst. You mentioned that certain people were jealous of Dr. Stiles and might have spread the rumors. I don't suppose you'd tell me who. It might be good for me to know in case I run into them. Uh, no, I don't think we need to discuss that. Okay. So you're convinced that Dr. Stiles poses no danger? No danger to, say, students who are participating in one of his experiments? Absolutely not. He may be on leave, but he's still a valued member of this department. I've reviewed his case personally. There's nothing physically wrong with David Stiles. It's been a pleasure, Miss Everett, but I really must get back to work. Thanks, Mr. Headley. You've been a big help. I only wish the best for David. I hope you'll treat him well and be a support. He allows so few people near him. I'll do my best. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. What now? I want to find out who David's enemies are inside the neurobiology department. I should snoop around in David's files. I don't think that's going to be so easy. Styles' experiment plan is probably in that filing cabinet. It would answer a lot of questions if I could get my hands on it. Be quiet. I guess not everyone in the department is a fan of Dr. Styles. At least, that's what Mr. Headley says. Hmm. Is there anyone in particular I should watch out for? Mr. Headley doesn't tolerate departmental gossip. And neither do I. Ah. So much for that. Dr. Styles asked me to get a copy of his experiment plan. The one he filed with the department? He misplaced his copy. I'm afraid Dr. Stiles will have oh. to come by himself for something like that. Or telephone. We don't give those kind of documents out to students. But... I'll tell him. Oh, um, Mr. Headley asked if you would bring him a cup of coffee. Did he? That's odd. Mr. Headley gets his own coffee. She took the key. I need to find a way to snatch it somehow. Okay, so I guess it's magic time. She keeps the key to the filing cabinet in that cup. I could try to take it with sleight of hand, but she's a real hawk. 
This will require something a little more devious. She keeps the key to the filing cabinet in that cup. I could try to take it with slide up. Okay. This will require... Uh, let's check our book, I guess. So, no, no, definitely not. No, the cup we have a cup, cup, maybe a magnet would be it would take the key, right? So, we could just take it, right. Okay, so the cup one, I think, seems good. Yes, that should work. But I'll need a magnet. Uh, then I guess we go to the shop, right? Maybe get some supplies. Fast as I am. Take all the time you need. Hi, Mephistopheles. Miss Everett, how kind of you to visit. Okay. I was going to buy a few things today for my... Nephew, he's just starting out. Your nephew has good taste. I still find those items useful myself. Take what you need and pay me on the way out. Thanks. Just take all the stuff we need, that, I mean, that she wants to take. Maybe it could be useful later and we don't have to come back every single time. Okay, nothing here else she wants to take. Check this one. Magnet, where's a magnet? This does you want to take spirit gum? What's this? A fake bump, spider, solid water, telephone spy. Rings. Oh, this is a magnet. Uh, cards. I don't really need cards. I think that's it. Okay. Anything else? Let me see. So. Okay. Then let's go. I picked up a few things. I need to pay you before I go. I know what you took. Twelve pounds, please. That's kind of cheap, no? Neat trick, that one. Merely a shopkeeper's necessity, Miss Everett. Enjoy your day. Thanks. I will. Okay, let's go do that. Hello, Susan. Okay, so... Palm the magnet in your right hand. Take the cup in your left hand. 
And then show your Odin's cup, then move the cup from your left hand to your right hand. And then manipulate, hold on a second, uh, manipulate the cup, turning it upside down and shake it, nothing comes out. Misdirect your audience. What does it take? The object from the cup in your left hand and finish it up your sleeve. So like this, and then like this. There we go. I finally hey, got the hang of that it. Key is missing. What? Yeah, see? What on earth? You didn't take it, did you? No. Me? Why would I want it? You have a spare, I hope, at my flat. That sucks. It even blows. Then what do we do now? We do another magic trick? Uh, to get her away, I guess? This that one? trick doesn't fit the situation. Huh. I don't know if I... That trick... How to get her away. This one? Huh. I like that one. No. I don't know, we have... Huh, I like... Arrow? Huh, I like that one, but it doesn't really make sense I know it doesn't make sense, but I don't see anything I can get else that makes out sense. Out of the room with this trick, but I'll need to get set up okay. for it first. Didn't think you would actually take this one. <laughs> I have I can get Susan out. Oh, okay. I have to do something first. Uh, where is it? Faster. Go. 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 For your portrait, you will need to do some prep work, but sta put stage blood in the tip of the fake thumb, then attach it to your right thumb with spirit gum. Okay. Uh, fake blood. Good. Put it here. Now I just need. Yes, the spirit gum. I'm aware of that. We. Now it's ready to go. Okay. Do we have it on now? I don't know. I'm all set for this trick, but one thing worries me. That Susan won't be gone long enough for me to do what I need to do. I don't want to get caught snooping around. That means what? I'm all set. I don't want to get caught. I guess we take the no no noise maker and put it somewhere. Maybe make her go look around here. Where's the noise maker? Hmm. If she finds this, she might return to her office too soon. Oh, okay. Hmm. I think this first aid kit needs to disappear. Abracadabra! <laughs> Very nice. Nice. And then what? Is that enough? Definitely not my... Okay. I guess that's all we need to do.
I only need to set up the first part of the trick. First part. Before you put, okay, we did that. In front of your audience, take any sharp object in your left hand. And then manipulate the object playing with it idly. Okay. Misdirect your victim by checking about something else. Manipulate the tool to make a slight puncture in the tip of the fake thumb. So we do it again. Like this. Okay. Ouch! What happened? I cut myself. Ow! Do you have disinfectant or something? Oh, I'll get the first aid kit. Come on. Oh, wait. Fast, over. Found it. If Susan finds this missing, she'll know I took it. I should fix that if I have time. This looks pretty okay, legit, so actually. Guess. Who knew you could get most of the benefits of exercising just from imagining it? Okay. Can we make a copy? Yes. I apologize for the delay. You'd think grown students would be above silly pranks. Really? All right, then. Let me see it. You mean, touch it? Oh, God, sorry. I'm such a baby about stuff like this. For heaven's sake, it has to be dealt with. I'll do it. It'll be better that way. Trust me. Is that a first aid kit? I'll take it to the bathroom and do it myself. Thank you so much. As you like. Just don't drip blood in the hall, please. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, we just put it in our fucking pocket. Why not? Hey, excuse me. Hello. Hi, That's you're wrong, a medic, game. right? Wait. You're in Dr. Styles' experiment. What do you want? What's the big secret? Nice. Indian? Nothing. I don't like everyone knowing my business. I just wanted to talk for a minute about Dr. Styles. All right. But I have class in 10 minutes, so it will have to be fast. What made you sign up for the experiment? What do you mean? I mean, like, what made you sign up for the experiment? It's not a crime. <laughs> <laughs> I could use the money. Since you're in the neurobiology department, you must have known Dr. Stiles before the experiment. Known of him, yes. You heard about him from people in the department? Do you have any idea who Styles is? He is, or was, one of the most famous neurobiologists in the history of the field. I studied him in high school. So yes, I guess I know something about him. Or at least I know the man he used to be when he was a part of this department. Dr. Styles is still a part of the department, isn't he? He had to submit an experiment plan to Mr. Headley. Or maybe technically. But everyone knows he's suffered brain damage in the accident and is no longer competent. Believe me, he's in possession of all his wits. In fact, he has a few I'd like to extract myself. Then why has he stopped teaching? Why has he not published since the accident? Maybe he couldn't face everyone feeling sorry for him all the time and asking about the accident over and over, and then expecting him to have completely forgotten about it in three months, and calling him crazy if he hasn't. Styles audit to to the world, to his students, to continue his work. Says who? Why do we know so Think much what now? you like. What did you think of the experiment last night? Strange and surprising. 
Last night was strange, wasn't it? What's the point of imagining exercising? That wasn't strange. Research has shown that imagining exercising causes the brain to generate the same impulses to the muscles and the nervous system as actually exercising, providing almost the same health okay. benefits. It's big news for healthcare, especially for disabled people. That's so I remember there that. are a lot of studies being done on the subject right now. So I'm going to exercise in a mind. So from now what on. was Thank strange you. about the experiment? I need to get to class. Come on, you said strange. Why? Just to finally meet Dr. Styles and that mask, that basement. It is rather dramatic. <laughs> but the strangest thing was that, um, despite all of that, I, I never mind. What? Just say it. He seemed normal. I was expecting. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I was expecting. That's yeah. what I was expecting. Did you notice anything unusual about Styles' equipment? No. Nothing at all? It was a standard fMRI setup, a good one. It's unusual to have a system that expensive in a private home, but otherwise, it's non-invasive. Harmless, as he said. I'm okay. late for class. I have to go. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay, what now? Let's check this paper. Can read it properly. To test the effects of visualizing different types of exercise on the heart rate, blood pressure, brain activity, and electrical impulse in central muscle tissue. Time from eight sessions running in October 2005. Six students aged 18 and 4. Okay, okay. The subjects will be led through a mental visualization process for each proposed exercise. The physical Activity will be measured in detail and in real time. FMRI and heart rate monitors will be used to record each subject's heart rate, blood pressure and brain activity. This data will later be compared to that of subjects in the same age range who participated in actual sporting activities. And then to determine what ways and how closely the brain and body are capable of mimicking actual activity using visualization technique. Okay. That's nice. Then what do we do now? Where do we go? I guess it's time to go to the horse path track. Let's go have a look. That's an elaborate pattern. Someone went to a lot of trouble. Uh. Ten to one, he's not an Oxford student. Looks like a headbanger to me. Hey. Hey. I heard something happened out here. Damn, that is freaky. Yeah. You a student? Me? Hell no. Well, that's all right then. Oh, I'm sick and tired of those spooners trying to tell me I've lost my mind. They wasn't here, was they? They always think they know everything. And that's straight up. I'm Eddie. I'm Sam. You were here when that Kids happened. Kids, ask him. Yeah. So what was it? A bunch of spooners messing about? Yeah. I think you can handle the truth. Because no one else can. Screw them, right? I've got an open mind. All right. You ready? I was here painting lines on the track. Every few months I've got to do it. Had my headphones on, you know. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> I 
rocking Shh. out. Yeah. All of a sudden, bam, like that. I'm in the middle of this wind. I'm in a huge cloud of dirt, right? It was moving too. The little pebbles and shit stinging me. It was like one of them cyclones or something. No way. Scared the crap out of me. See, I can't breathe, can I? So I legged it. Can't see nothing. Finally, I get out of it. Onto the grass. A cloud of dust? Like a dust storm? Yeah. So then I looks back at the track. Them lines were there. Just like that. Hey, up. You want to know what I think? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you heard of crop circles, right? Mm. Well, this was just like that crap. Only I saw it happen. <laughs> God. I think it was aliens. I swear to God. What time did all this come down? Um, uh, maybe half past? I came in at 11. It took me a bit to get the paint mixed and stuff. Did you hear anything? Maybe the sound of a motor? Nah, no, 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 no. Anyway, I had my pod cranked. Da -da 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 -da. How long was it from the time <laughs> the wind hit you till you saw the lines? Oh, uh, smart, ain't you? That's the thing. Couldn't have taken me more than five minutes, maybe ten max to get clear of it. And them lines was already painted when I looked back. In all that dust, too. Oh, you tell me how that's possible. No way they could have been there before. It must have been pretty dark out. You see them lights? Oh, have a look. I would have seen him. Maybe you passed out for a while. You said you couldn't breathe. Oh, you sound like Mr. Gerald, my boss, bloody wanker. Look. I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, I'm not God Almighty, am I? But that ain't the way I remember it. Did you see anything else at all? The eyes were all clogged from the dust. I don't know. I'll... What? You did see something else, didn't you? Come on, Eddie. We're cool, right? Well, I, 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 I ain't said this to nobody, but there, there was something on the track. What? I saw the funnel still going around. This cloud of just chaos, right? Dust and pebbles and shit whirling around. Like something from a sci-fi movie. The thing is... It was following the track. What do you mean, following the track? I mean, I saw it turn the bleeding corner. Who ever heard of wind doing that? Hey, Eddie. Thanks, man. You're pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Any time. <laughs> See you around. See ya. Maybe because we were running there. That's the. I think I we were running Eddie there, right? Maybe the... the time. Magicians have been known to pull off big stunts in minutes, but not without a lot of planning and practice. Someone knew what they were doing. I'd better see what I can find out about the skilled magicians in this area. I don't think it has anything to do with being uh, any ma fucking magician. Uh, I didn't say yet. I don't know yet. Where can we go next? So the only t we can go back to Dread Hall, Oxford, and St. Edmund's Hall. But I guess we'll probably go to Oxford and ask what's his name. Ah, uh, Miss Everett. Thanks. Yeah. Do you know anything? What can I do for you today, Miss Everett? Mind if I ask a few questions? The asker always reveals more than the one who answers. Ask away. I finished the betrayer's price. Did you? Congratulations are in order. You might want to check the box again. One never knows. I'll do that. Oh, okay. Are you a member of the Daedalus Club? If I were a member... I'd be sworn by oath not to reveal the name of any member, and that would include myself. Do you know what the penalty is for breaking an oath? No. What? Having your eye plucked out. I hope that's not the kind of trick you pull for what? a tourist. It's pretty convincing, with a bit of stage blood. Is it true that every member of the Daedalus Club once pulled off a grand game? Oh, yes. It doesn't matter who you know or how successful you might be. 
Even CIA code breakers have to create a game. There are CIA code breakers in the Daedalus Club? Certainly. It's about the game in all its forms. Though magic and illusion play a large role, naturally. Naturally. So, can you tell me more about what a grand game is exactly? I suppose I might tell you about some of the famous games of the past. Those that became so well known they can't really be considered secret anymore. Do you think it's possible that someone could be running a grand game in Oxford right now? Is it possible? Well, not me. Not me. <laughs> you have my attention. Tell me about some of the famous grand games. Let's see. Uh, there was the successful TV illusionist. He was famous for making large things disappear. You mean... Ah, ah, ah. No names, please. As it happens, one of his most legendary stunts was to make the Statue of Liberty disappear from the New York Harbor for 30 minutes. I remember that. It I wasn't don't. just for the TV cameras. That feat was a bid for entry to the Daedalus Club. No way! Did he get in? Remember the eye, my dear. Remember the eye. <laughs> Tell me about another grand game. And this one caused quite a scandal. Uh, Tiffany's in London had a window display of a ring called the Crensfield Star. The pink diamond in this ring was worth millions. Yeah? One day, the Tiffany's manager noticed that the ring was gone. The security guards remembered a well-dressed, frail old lady who had stopped to ask questions. Within hours, the theft was all over the news, and the police were searching the city. They kept getting strange tips about this little old lady, and were led on a merry chase. It was on the news all day, getting more and more bizarre. But... What is it? Did they really steal the ring? My dear, I don't think so. do you think the Daedalus Club would accept a thief? Let me finish the story. No, in the end, the ring was found the next morning, in Scotland Yard, in the <laughs> cup of coffee of the chief detective on the case. Oh, that is awesome. With my luck, that though, sure I'd is end awesome. up in jail. There's always risk in a great game. Managing it is the sign of a master. But it's not a stunt I would recommend to you, no. Any more grand games you can That's tell me about? Lot. Just one more, I think. This okay. was a game Last a potential one. member designed for his wife. She was a twin and had been separated from her sister when they were small. The man found the twin and plotted a way for the two women to meet. One of the sisters was an antique collector and the other worked for Sotheby's. He designed a beautiful game that had them both tracking down pieces of an ancient chess set until the quest brought them together. A lovely piece of work. And touching. Very delicately done. Hmm. I see what you mean. There are all kinds of games. Uh, perhaps someday you will invent yet another kind, Miss Everett. I look forward to it. Thank you for the info. I'll now check the box again. Oh, we cannot. We can't check the box again. Then why do you tell me to check the box again? Well, I have no idea where we are supposed to go now, then. There's nowhere to go, huh? Well, in this case, I think I'm going to stop this episode here.